Hello folks, my Kaylee 7 here, look at that, is that not the most beautiful thing, my goodness, look at that, wow, that is one sweet motorcycle, it just looks all business. It just looks all business. The uh, ugly bug face. <laughs> I like it. A lot of people don't like it, but I like it. All right, before I get going today, let me show you what I got. I went to Etsy.com and I made myself one of these. 2021 Kawasaki ZH2SE. And then over here, my KD7 Moto Logs. So let's get this party started. As you can see, it's a beautiful day. And I am out and about. Going to work, but I figured I'd take you on a little side loop for a moment, just to have some fun. And as I ride today, I think I'm going to talk about uh, YouTube and content creation and how that relates to uh, me. And if anybody else is out there thinking, you know, I'd like to start making moto vlogs, kind of like Jackie Boy recently has started to do. By the way, Jackie Boy, you're, you're doing good, my man. You're doing all right. That looks like a cop. I don't trust it. That is not a cop. That is a housewife. What do I mean when I talk about YouTube and content creation and mission statements and such? Well, I was watching Her Two Wheels not too long ago, and she had a video called How, How Much Did YouTube Pay Me For My Video That Has A Million Views? And she got like five grand, which is pretty awesome. And she was talking about uh, how she makes her content. It's content. It's not just how she makes her moto vlogs, it's how she makes her content. And she uses YouTube as a business. She sees it as a business, which is fine. I don't uh, poo poo that at all. Watch it, chucklehead. So she sees it uh, like this. She'll put out a video and then she'll look at the analytics and she'll find out what parts of the video people watch most, how long they watch, when did they click off, and then she uses that information to make her next videos and do the things that she saw people like before, do even more of it. So basically the viewership is driving uh, her creativity, in a way. And I understand that because she sees it as a business and she's trying to get views so she can make money, and I understand that entirely and have no problem with it. But it made me think. 
two things. One is a broader thought, and then the other one is more personal. And that is the media. People are always criticizing the media for being sensationalistic, uh, overly negative, tabloidish. And it, of course, is tabloidish, and it, of course, is over the top. But why is that? Why is that, uh, that problem so prevalent? I'll tell you why. It's because of us. What does that mean? Well, news organizations depend on advertising revenue to survive, right? That's their, that's how they make their money. So they know if it bleeds, it leads, because that's what people want to see. People are morbidly fascinated. And so they, they want to have that kind of content. They want to have that kind of stuff. And advertisers know this as well. So they're not going to be generating a lot of ad revenue on, you know, stories about a, a kitten getting rescued from a tree. But if a kitten gets thrown off a bridge by a military officer, in Iraq, oh man, that's going to get all the views. But if a military officer adopts a puppy and brings him back to the United States to save him, that's eh, not going to get so many views on the news. So it's our own morbid fascination that has made the situation we're in. I remember when news organizations first went over to the tabloid model back in the early 90s. In Boston, it was a big hullabaloo about that. Channel 7 News went over to the tabloid style. And then NBC, uh, Channel 4 News, and Channel 5, WCVB in Boston, ABC News, they were the last to do that. And they didn't do it for a long time. And I think even when they did, they kind of modified it. <laughs> but since that time, everything has been tabloid style. And so people who uh, didn't see that transition think that that's normal. That that's the only way news has ever been, and it hasn't. It's kind of sad, really. Sorry, I'm concentrating here. I'm trying not to die. You know what I mean? Ah, uh, nuts. I was gonna go for it today. I was totally going to go for it. Hang on a moment here. All right, let's see. Let's wait a moment here and see what we can do. <laughs> Waiting for this guy to go. We interrupt this motovlog to bring you a crazy, stupid guy doing stupid stuff. What kind of vehicle is that? Is that a cop car? I don't know. No. Okay, here we go. Ready? And that really scares the crap out of you. That really scares the crap out of you. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. 
Uh, that laugh is real, folks. Oh my goodness. I'm telling you. That is really something. <laughs> my god my god that is something that really is Oh, he just drove off the damn road. That is terrifying. <laughs> oh my God. That is absolutely terrifying. <laughs> it really feels like, it really feels like you're gonna fly right off this thing. Like if you let go of the handlebars, that's it. See ya. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Well, just to let you know, I am in uh, rider mode, and so I have the, the traction control at, at the lowest level, not off. And, uh... The, the power mode is full and so I um, I had that throttle twisted all the way back so that was full open throttle and my god was that ever awesome So where was I? I was talking about content and modifying it to suit the likes of the viewers. And so what happens is nowadays on YouTube, I've noticed this kind of happening. Uh, in the early days it was, you made a, a video, you put it out there and you didn't get any money for it. And people watched it and they liked it. And you became friends and you talked and next thing you know, you have meetups and that still happens, but 
you weren't making the video for for likes, for clicks. You're just making the video for you, talking about whatever. But now, because of this uh, content creation and analytics, people are really honing it down to certain kinds of, of channels. You know, there's if you're riding a, a Honda Goldwing, you have to make only Honda Goldwing videos. And every video has to be about the Honda Goldwing. This feature, that feature, this aspect, that aspect. And then if you're riding a Kawasaki ZH2 SE, every video has to be about that. Or if you're riding all kinds of different motorcycles and reviewing them, then your channel is only about reviewing different motorcycles. And that's it. And that's kind of sad. Because it takes the way it takes away some of the freedom that, that you feel. If you start uh, catering to the likes of the audience, especially based on the analytics, then it'll influence you to hone down what you do to a fine edge and then you're hemmed in and then if you want to make something that is different from that you run the risk of losing viewers losing subscribers hearing negative comments and so what do you do that's how YouTube has evolved over time I don't think it was always like that And viewers themselves have that expectation. If they're watching me on a Goldwing for a while and they subscribe to me because I'm on a Goldwing, the moment I switch to another bike, they've lost interest. And for me, I was kind of falling victim to that as well because I was starting to produce videos you know that were bike specific Goldwing this and ZH2 that and not talking about life in general and observations and philosophy and personal stories and you know the stuff that makes a moto vlog a moto vlog I, I became uh, a product reviewer a product endorser and I, I don't want to do that anymore I want to try to avoid that. I mean, of course I'll still tell you what I think about the stuff I have, but it's not going to be only that. I'm going to make videos about, you know, crazy stories about my family, and believe you me, whew, there are some crazy ones. Uh, my history, you know, who I am, where I'm from, that kind of thing. Every once in a while, I'll take you to places that look kind of cool. We don't have many covered bridges. Sorry, Walt. <laughs> See, Walt, now you're known as the covered bridge man. So if you don't make videos about covered bridges, well, we don't want to watch. <laughs> Just kidding. I mean, it's okay to have a channel that's specific to a certain thing. I don't have any problems with that. It's just not for me. It's not what I want to do. I don't want to be hemmed in. And you could see that I was thinking that way because I was like, should I make a second channel for my Kawasaki? Well, screw that. I'm not making a second channel for my Kawasaki. Look at the thumbnail. If you see the thumbnail has uh, this view and you don't want to watch a Kawasaki then, uh, you know, don't watch it. That's all. So that's pretty much my take on it, on this whole content creation thing. It reminds me of that Wayne's World thing where 
And like, we will not pander to any advertiser as he picks up a slice of pizza from Pizza Hut. And the other guy's drinking Pepsi. <laughs> Product placement stuff. And, you know, thinking about it, too, I have sold for Kawasaki and Honda and Harley-Davidson. I have sold them so many bikes over the years. People watching my videos and then ending up deciding to buy one because of what I've said and shown and experienced. I never get a commission on any of that. Like Moose, he bought his Honda Goldwing in part because he saw what mine could do. And now I have a Kawasaki. <laughs> Sorry, Moose. Anyway. All right. I'm at work. Time to go get serious. I'll talk to you guys later.